How is everybody doing? Okay. Um, if you're ready, Brad, and, and you'd like to start, um, usually what we do is that you start with your presentation, and then uh, if um, uh, anybody has any questions, they can uh, type them through the chat, and um, and you can answer them afterwards or on the go or uh, well, however you like, right? Uh, I think everybody knows yeah. you. Yeah. Is everybody who's here? I think they uh, already. I I have heard of you. I'm not sure about that. I know Paco has. But anyway... Um, I know Paco and Julie and... So I don't need to uh, introduce you then, do I? If everybody around knows you already. No, I think we're good. Right, okay. Uh, just just thank you for coming, okay? And um, I'll disappear from the screen now, so... Um, uh, okay, Paco says that uh, right. sounds a bit poor. Um, you, you, you cannot hear us, Roy Paco, or, or, or what is it? Um, is it Brad or me or Paul the fact that you cannot hear? Both, okay. Um, I can okay. um, I can turn it up a bit louder now. Not clear. Better now. Clearer now. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'll uh, I'll um, let uh, Brad uh, start with his uh, webinar. I'll um, turn my mic and my webcam off now. Uh, but I'll be around. Okay. And uh, if you need me, I'll I'll be watching you. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. So All right. Right. There we go. So I Nice. I think uh, I think it's now it's it's just me. Has the uh, has the audio improved at all? Sometimes when there's just one person speaking, it's a little bit better. Can you let me know how the audio is? How does it sound to you? Oh, music to my ears. Beautiful. So um as you can see, I am in a car. I am in a car in the south of France because I'm on vacation. And I'm down in the south of France surfing. And it's a lot of fun. So the first thing that I'm going to ask you is, here we go, where are you? I'd love to hear where you are. I'm down in the south of France near Bordeaux where they make all that delicious red wine. Where are you coming from? So Nina is coming from home uh, that's in the Ukraine. Is it raining? It's not raining here. Paris. Is that, is that, uh, who's that in Paris? Manava. South of Spain home. Yeah, yes, we've been talking on Twitter a little bit recently. Nice. Thanks for coming. Pretty warm. Yeah, the weather has been crazy here recently, but uh, I've been able to surf a little bit, which is nice. So, um, home in Bangalore, India. That is so cool. Thank you for coming, Shabir. And uh, I know most of you are teachers. Uh, Shabir, are you a teacher as well? So, just checking in, uh, Sarah Shabir, are, are you a teacher as well? I know the others are teachers coming in uh, from, from Greece and from Spain and from Ukraine. Can you hear me? Okay, great. All right, so we all have teachers on board and we have a small group, so I'm excited about that. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. So what we're going to explore today is I'd like to talk about three things, and I'll talk about each of them for about 10 minutes. And then we'll have time to uh, discuss any questions you might have at the end and, and uh, hopefully have some of you talk as well. 
So the first thing that I'd like to talk about um, will be how I believe the internet and e-learning is changing our profession. I saw Tyson just came on. Hey, buddy. Um, so how I believe it's changing the profession for teachers and how it's also changing the language learning industry on the whole. Um, I'm also interested and we'll spend some time hearing about what you're doing as far as online learning. Uh, lots of people these days are talking about flipping the classroom, moving homework or projects online. Some teachers are using blogs. So I'm interested in hearing what you're doing uh, on that level. And then the last thing that we'll also talk about is what I'm doing uh, for the company that I am collaborating with, which is called Edulong. And it's an English language uh, publisher. And we're in France. And I'll be talking about some of the things that we're doing that are really unique. And I'm excited to talk about that. So those are the three things that I'll be talking about and that we'll be talking about. And then hopefully what your takeaway will be is that you'll have fresh ideas for the classroom, a uh, new perspective on the profession and industry, because it is uh, changing quite a lot these days. And it's good to know where it's going and where it's been and, and where it is. Um, and then also the keys to continue learning online with a PLN, a professional, uh, I'm sorry, personal learning network uh, of an inter international and diverse background, which is uh, amazing. And I think a lot of you are definitely connected in my PLN, which is which is great. So I can maybe skip over some of that because you guys are already on it. Um, so, and the last thing, a little bit of uh, fun and international chat, and look look forward to hearing what you all say in, in the chat box. I'll be trying to pay attention. A surf and I, that's right. <laughs> As you can tell, Tyson just came in. I'm in I'm in the car because that's the best internet connection I can get on my vacation while I'm surfing. So welcome, welcome. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Yeah, hilarious, right? So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the question is, how is the internet and e-learning changing our profession? And I'd love to hear from you. Uh, throw, out, throw out a sentence. What, what, uh, what do you think is the biggest change that the internet or e-learning is, is bringing to our profession as teachers? So I'm going to give you just 30 seconds, a minute, to think of something. Uh, that you'd like to share, something specifically you think is changing quite a bit. It allows more access to education to anyone, anytime. Absolutely. The world is flat. We'll be talking a little bit about that. Agency. I'd love to hear more. Well, what do you mean by that, Mira? More control over learning. Yes, absolutely. There's a lot more uh, collaboration and personalization, personalization that's going on. And we'll be talking a little bit about that. Animated videos on Facebook. And my students watch them on the internet. Yeah, a lot of people are um, getting into making their own comics. And those can be a lot of fun to bring into the classroom, too. I've seen a lot of people doing that. What else? Anybody else have something that they'd like to share? Paco, higher interaction. Absolutely. Great. Well, I'll continue to watch. The internet changed my own teaching a lot. Teach students to learn. Yes, we. Uh, this is the, this is the constant reminder that we have to hear. Um, that we're educators first, and then we're English teachers. Uh, you know, that's just that's a part of what we're doing. There's so much more that we're teaching in the classroom, and obviously online now too. Great. So yes, easy connection, easy file sharing. Yes, digital literacy. Um, and 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 for some of us, the the students are teaching teaching us as much as we're teaching them. Uh, so lots of interesting things going on. Um, so I'm moving on to the next slide, which is, it's coming up. They feel they're controlling what they learn. Yes, the students are in more control. They have more choices. 
No need to go out and find any materials we need. There is a plethora of materials. This is very true. Not sure why slide six isn't coming up. PLNs, yes, professional development. That is the first thing that I want to talk about uh, in the next list. Hmm. Trying to get slide six to come up. So another thing with the internet and technology is that sometimes it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't always do what you want it to do. Uh, Whereas a blackboard. So, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Brad. I I can see uh, slide number six perfectly all right. I don't know about the rest, but I. Uh, I can see on the screen perfectly all right. I don't know about the rest. If you could let us know if you see it as well. Uh, great. Yeah, so, that's right. Okay. That's slide six. Yeah. Great, great. So for whatever reason, I can't see it. Maybe it's the surf waves are, are being absorbed by the... Uh, by the ocean. So I'm going to open it up on my computer and then I'll just go ahead and I'll have, uh, I'll go ahead and click through it as we go to the next one. So glad everyone can see it. Um, I'll start with the first one, which is professional development. Um, I'm not going to go over this very much because everyone that's here knows about webinars, knows about the blogosphere, knows about social media and everything that's going on there. Um, so the one thing that I will share is um, is my my uh, my favorite blogs, and um, these 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 are these are the gems the gems that I think that you should definitely check out. Uh, if you look at this page, it will show you all the people that are blogging that I really enjoy following, um, and so those are my personal recommendations. But uh, there's just so much out there, and there's so much to learn, and I don't need to preach to the choir on that. So we'll go ahead and, and go on to number two, which is the myriad of resources. Um, so what's really interesting today is that there are resources that have, have been available for 20, 30 years that are being moved online. And there's also new resources that are being developed that are specific to the environment. Um, so what we're finding are traditional actors that are coming online, and we're also finding uh, new actors that are startup actors. And then we're also finding what is beautiful about the internet. There's lots of people that are doing uh, self-publishing. And um, the, it's the wonderful thing about the internet that the, the connection and the possibility to, to share a message is just so huge, and you can do it from without moving one inch from your sofa. Um, so there's been an explosion in English learners as well in the past few years, which also is obviously causing an explosion in resources and, 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 and publishing. And um, one of uh, my favorite person to go to to find out about any any uh, anything that's going on in the industry would be David Grattle and the research that he's going doing for British Council. Um, if you haven't checked that out, I've just put the note in the uh, in the chat box, and that is definitely worth uh, checking out. Um, so one of the big questions that comes up as there's so many more new learners coming in and there's so many more resources coming in is where is the quality and what is, uh, what is worth paying attention to and sharing with your learners. Um, what we do see is that because there's so much more self-publishing going on, there's editorial content and then there's non-editorial content. And it's the same kind of discussion that people have over Wikipedia, whether it's a trustable, a trustworthy resource or not. Um, the interesting thing that we've seen in, in just in the last year is that the Encyclopedia Britannica is no longer printing, um, and that's after 200 years of being printed. Uh, I'm just going to double check. Can everyone hear me? Because I'm not sure about my internet. 
Great. Okay. If I didn't mention, uh, if I didn't mention, I am, I, <laughs> I'm in my car. This is the place that I could get internet while I'm on vacation. So if I cut out, uh, I'll, I'll have to come back in just in a minute. But I'm glad everyone's hearing me, and I'm glad that uh, we're moving forward. Um, so what I just posted into the into the chat is uh, a blog post that I did about Encyclopedia Britannica uh, dropping off. And it, it's interesting because it, it's a great example of how uh, self-publishing and wikis and things like that are, are really uh, experiencing growth because of the internet and these collaborative, uh, uh, collaborative exercises and collaborative use of information. Um, so teachers are, are now curating what they find both as editorial and, and what you might call non-editorial um, resources. And so they're curating among them uh, both on a price uh, comparison. There, there, there are lots of things that are available for a fairly expensive amount per month or one, one purchase. There are things that are available for free. There are freemium ones that you have to uh, share the material or you have to, um, you have to subscribe in some way that uh, you're, you're giving something for, uh, for your participation or ads. And then there's uh, premium and pay services. And then with Edulong, we have our own uh, pay-what-you-want system, which is uh, fairly innovative in the industry. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So teachers and industry leaders are curating this information. And they're curating it among uh, different price ranges. But just as importantly, uh, they're paying attention to and curating uh, on a pedagogical level what is of quality. Um, so I'm going to share another post that I did. Uh, this was back in August. And it was, it was looking at um, how the internet is, is, is changing the way we, we learn languages and whether we are moving forward with an interactive or communicative approach to uh, uh, learning languages or if we are uh, using older approaches because that's what was easily available to move online. Um, or because it's uh, it's the way that people are dealing with the environment uh, at, at the start. So I'm going to try to move the slide forward. Um, what I th think I have now, ah. slide seven, is there a quote in front of you? Yeah, uh, slide, sorry, Brad, slide seven is there. I can move them for you, no problem. Okay, great. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a heads up, and if you can help me out with that, that's awesome. Um, so slide okay, seven okay. Is, is a quote from, um, from a professor from the University of Hawaii that is called, his name is Theodore Rogers. And uh, I'm going to give you a moment to read the quote. Um, the interesting thing is, uh, Theodore Rogers, with this quote in particular, and that paper that he's coming from, is cited over 3,500 times on Google, and um, it's definitely worth uh, worth being cited that many times because it's uh, a very poignant point. Um, another place that he's cited in is Tefalpedia. I don't know how many of you have checked out this website, but it's a nice, uh, a nice tool, a nice wiki uh, that is very TEFL specific. So in that article that I've just put in, it, it cites uh, Theodore Rogers as well. So I share this quote mainly for the, the, the purpose of underlining the last sentence and, and, uh, and questioning to what extent the applications that we see online today are trying to immerse learners or help them collaborate with other learners, their teacher, and then also negotiating meaning. Um, so what I do see is there, there, there's some, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of people coming into the space because there, there's obviously lots of uh, opportunities in this space to, to make money, but also to uh, have, have a move move forward in your career, and so there's there are different things that we're curating. There's a price range. There's the quality. 
Um, and then there's also things that we're curating because they're fun and they're free and they're cool. Um, and then I always just want to come back and underline to what extent uh, teachers are deciding whether there's pedagogy behind it and whether students will be able to move forward in these uh, new pedagogical ways or are they spinning their wheels on something and imitating uh, you know, a Hollywood movie? There's lots out there. Um, we need to make sure that we're making good choices for what we bring in class and obviously for what we're passing on to students as well. So um, I'm going to move on to what I believe is, sorry, I don't have the slides in front of me as easily. Um, language schools and asynchronous learning, which is on slide six. Um, so there is a blogger that I really respect um, who is putting out wonderful things all the time. And his name is David Petrie. Uh, he's in Spain, I believe. And he talked about the future of language schools back in November. Uh, now, he's not the first person to talk about it, but it was one of the first articles to really catch my eye because of the way that it was presented and because it's kind of, it, he has a humorous approach a lot of times. Definitely check out David's blog. Um, and one of the things that I thought was really interesting is he's talking about the future of language schools in it. Um, and lots of teachers are asking uh, to what extent, uh, you know, language learning is going to go 100% online or 50% online and how soon it's going to happen. And so this was one of the first times that I had read someone uh, really tackle it in, 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 in a nice, intelligent way uh, in the blogosphere. And one of the things that I really enjoyed that he said was he was talking about uh, language schools on some level are a middleman. And there's middlemen in and, and any industry or any kind of commerce. There's, there's almost always a middleman. And it's a, it's a necessary part. But as things are going online, um, it might not be as necessary of a part. At Edulong, one of the things that I, I've talked with our, our, our founder and owner before is that in the next few years, the biggest school in the world will not be a physical school, will be, but will be the online school of independent teachers all across the world teaching English. Um, so this, the, the idea of uh, a physical school being a middleman between students uh, and teachers it is an interesting one. Um, and another interesting thing to keep in, keep in mind is the students that are able to go to these schools. Um, within Edulong, we, we have our own numbers of, and the way that we're looking at uh, how everything's changing in the English language uh, sector. And we think there's about 50 million people that, uh, that can afford private lessons or lessons after higher education or lessons during their secondary school or before to learn English. And if there's 500 million people actively learning English at any point uh, in the world, that means that only about 10% are actually able to, 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 to afford these more expensive classes. So I, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, drawing out the, the possibility that uh, language schools, I think they are going to grow over the next few years, but I think there's also going to be exponential growth within the digital and online learning sphere. And I'll actually talk about specific numbers that just came out that, uh, that, that say that in five years, the entire digital uh, English language publishing will double. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Very interesting numbers. Um, but one of the interesting things, and if we can go to slide eight, please. One of the interesting things is that all of, the, all of this education going online is providing an opportunity to rethink about the conversation. Um, so we've, we've talked about how teachers are changing. We've talked about students growing. We've talked about the resources that are changing. And also the fact that the place is changing. Um, and the quote on slide eight, which is really interesting for me, is that uh, it's uh, from an article in Mashable. I'll uh, give you the link here in a minute. And uh, basically, uh, I'll give you a minute to, to read it. But basically, it's saying that the biggest power that technology and that online learning is providing is the, is the opportunity to rethink everything. Um, so because it's happening in a new place, because of this movement, uh, the whole conversation is being rethought. 
which brings us back to uh, teachers and, and analyzing pedagogy and uh, new, new approaches for the classroom where people are talking about flipping the classroom and changing the way that they're delivering content. Um, one of the interesting things about flipping the classroom is that it's, it's, uh, it's not anything that's that, that very different. Um, here I've, I've presented the four P's of pedagogical approach in the classroom, which is you present an idea, you practice the idea, you go through with production, and then you work on personalization or, or, or some way for students to own that language uh, themselves. And really, uh, these big buzzwords of flipping the classroom, um, it's, uh, it's interesting because now it's, it, it, it's accessible and fun in a different way. But really, the only thing that's really changing is the presentation. Um, and that presentation means that the students are, are now studying what they're going to learn in class, outside of class, and then they're practicing with their teacher. So that passive time when when students are uh, just listening in class, is now being moved outside of class. Um, and I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, saying that this in any negative way. I think that it, that it's wonderful to have a more active uh, classroom environment. Um, what what I am saying though is is, is it's not that radical. Um, that small changes can really big uh, bring bring upon. Uh, uh, a big change in the end. So one of the blogs that I also really love following, I'm going to share with you here, Distance Learning Rebranded. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it could be, you know, it's all the buzzwords. And in, in, in the end, I think you're, you and I will probably see eye to eye that it's, it's what are they getting out of it, uh, not, not how they get to A to B, but hopefully that they're getting to B and C and D. There's, there's bed words for it. And there's people that are really doing interesting things with flipping the classroom. It, it has a lot of energy going around it. Um, and that article that I've just uh, thrown in the, in the comment booth uh, from Edutopia is, is actually pretty interesting just for that reason. Um, let me see, did I? OK. Um, I'm also going to share an article uh, from another author that I really enjoy who actually guest blogged. Uh, not an author, but a, a blogger. He guest blogged um, on our blog a few months ago. Phil Wade is teaching in a small island down uh, down off of Africa, La, La Réunion, which is an island, uh, which is a small island that um, that is a French territory. And he wrote about how he's, in some sense, flipping the classroom with one of Edulong's applications. Um, so you can check that out if you haven't already. So, um, we're moving beyond, uh, if we can go to slide nine, please. So before we move on to, uh, the, for me there's four parts of the equation of, if we're looking at our, how, how everything is changing on a global level. There's students, 404 link, huh. Thank you for the 404 link. Where am I? I'm looking it up now. All right. Does it work now, Paco? Thanks for keeping an eye on that for me, buddy. Is that link working now? Still nope. Oh man! You know what? I'll uh, I'll I'll try to bring it out later. We'll just keep moving forward. Not a big deal. Um. So we are on slide nine. So at this point, I'd love to hear. Okay, great. Well, if it works for some folks, uh, even so much the better. Um. We'll, we'll try to we'll try to give it a a 405 later if the it's the quotation symbol and couldn't uh, <laughs> thanks Ty so what I'd like to move on from here is 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 after I've I've talked about all of these changes that are going on on different levels whether it's the students the teachers the resources the um, 
the place. Um, what I want to hear is, is, is how it's changing for you at this point. Um, so I'd love to hear, what have you done with online learning? Uh, have any of you flipped the classroom or uh, worked with distance learning rebranded? Um, how many of you are teaching online, uh, whether it's with a language a learning management system or whether it's through Skype? Uh, can you give me just a sentence or two on what you've done that has moved beyond the traditional four walls of the classroom? And I will take this opportunity to have a sip of water. Online office hours. So Tyson, does that mean that you're on uh, like a chat that you let your students uh, come through with and, and talk to you on? Paco, I know you have some online teaching experience. You have a blog. You have a blog where you share with your students. I guess it's not you're teaching them online, but you're definitely online, buddy. Blackboard. Blackboard is an illuminate. Hi. Less slick, OK. OK. And how do you like that ties? Is it a is it an all right system? Right, Paco. I think I think um, you know I, I think we have this image of of doing things online that you know you're doing so much online and it's it, some teachers are doing a lot, but I think a lot of us are doing even small things in small ways and it's moving that way. So even if the majority of the time that you're spending with your students is online, I know you have a blog which is already more than a lot of teachers out there. With the Flash program, we had an English lesson without parents. Nice. Blogs, Wiki, Facebook. All right. What did you do on Twitter, Paco? Corporate tools. Explain a little bit more, Mur. I'm excited to hear what caught me three. <laughs> Check the hashtag. All right. So you were teaching them some regional slang, maybe? It is true, Nina, what you're saying, that um, we're speaking from a, a at this point, it, it, it could be a privileged position that uh, not not a uh, not as many people around the world have have as easy or as high quality access to the internet as we do. Uh huh. A lot of web tool students use explore language rather than teachers to deliver knowledge. Yes. So we definitely see eye to eye on a pedagogical standpoint. Wonderful. Um, so, number ten. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it up there, and then we're gonna move through it kind of fast. Oh, I see it this time. Wonderful. Nice. Thanks. Um, so. Digital English digital learning, uh, the industry is, 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 is huge. Um, I'm going to send you another link, and this is, this is very business oriented, but I, I like knowing what's going on, uh, on, on all levels of, uh, of our profession. And, um, so this is a report, uh, a fairly recent report. It's talking about how the global market for digital English language learning processes and services will expand over the next six years. Um, and in 2011, it was 1.31 billion. And their projections are that it will double in about five years. Um, so the question is, why is it experiencing such growth? Well, we all know that uh, English is becoming more and more por uh, important, but it's also experiencing growth because so many things are going to a digital, uh, are getting transferred to digital, uh, dig digitalization formats. 
Um, also a huge rise in M learning as well. Um, and then also what's, what's really interesting, I saw, I think this, this link should work. Um, a lot of countries are, are, are now, um, are now making English as a, uh, as an official language, whether it's, uh, an, a native language in the, in the area or not. Uh, this is an article someone wrote about last year about Mongolia moving over to uh, English as an official language. And it was actually in 2005, but it's someone still writing about it, how it, it was a big deal. Um, so where do you think the greatest growth is in uh, this, this new, this, all of the, where is the greatest growth for uh, English digital language technology or English digital language? Hey, Alexandra. Where do you think is the greatest growth? What, what countries or what area do you think are having the, um, the largest growth? Hey, how's it going? Thanks so much for showing up. Korea. Korea is definitely big. USA, surprisingly, yes. Um, there are 10 countries that it says that are above 20%. So the, the, the demand is growing 20% per year. The, the number of students and, and, and the amount that they're, they're consuming every year is, is growing by 20%, which is really large. Russia is among those two. And which do you think uh, are probably the highest two? No one's guessed it yet, is my hint. Two countries, one that comes in at 41% every year it's moving up. There it is, Tyson. And the second one is Malaysia, or the first one, rather. Um, so the, the industry is exploding. Uh, you know, I was really surprised when I read this that the, the country that is experiencing the most growth in Europe, can you guess what it is? Or not the most growth, but the, the highest uh, rate of consumption. The greatest amount of consumption or learner uh, learner expenditures. This is going to blow you away. So we're guessing Romania. I don't think Romania is at the top. Actually, it has. It, it, actually, you are right. Romania, Poland, the Czech Republic, and Hungary are the ones with the largest growth rate. But the uh, the people that the, the country that is uh, using the most is actually our very own Spain. Spain is uh, is, the, is the largest consumer of digital uh, English language -like products. So, so that blew me away. Um, we are looking at uh, not only how the uh, that's right, no wonder Paco. <laughs> We're looking at how the industry is changing uh, really on, on, on a business and publisher level. So we've talked about how it's changing with um, the learners uh, increasing, how it's changing with teachers with professional development and, and new pedagogical reflections. We've talked about how it's changing with resources, what's available. We've talked about uh, the place that it's happening, um, not that it's in the four traditional walls of the classroom anymore, and, and how all of that is changing. Um, each element in and of itself, um, and and now there's there's one more element that we haven't uh, that we haven't addressed, which is which is the publishers, which have a, a huge impact on um, on the industry as well, and uh, so the publishers are are moving towards more. A lot of them are moving towards more open and collaborative environments, although not all, uh, not all of them. Uh, there's lots of things that are available on the web now that are free. Uh, visibility and transparency. Uh, this is something that's really interesting that, um, that we, we now are able to see the, sometimes the inside of these organizations and, and, and how they're producing what they're producing. And if people aren't happy with them, sometimes we'll see in the blogosphere people uh, explaining how upset they are about um, you know working as an author for a publisher and how they're being treated. That these are the kinds of things that we're seeing, and so that are having an effect on 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 the industry and then how people perceive them. 
Just double checking. Can can you hear me? Great. I'm still worried that the connection is going to come out. Um, so, uh, and 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 the really cool thing uh, that are that are going on within um, within visibility that we're talking about is just just uh, how much people are, are are attached to what it what what is uh, being right and what is being done that's well. The most viral video uh, ever on the internet, uh, which probably many of us have seen in the past uh, in the past few months, uh, is it was was Coney and. In the same way, what's going on in uh, in education? There's a lot more visibility now. There's a lot more people talking about what is and what isn't right, or where we should be going, um, and how organizations are or are not um, working with that. If you look up in Google, you you look up Harvard and Publishing Journal. Uh, just in the past few days, Harvard has started uh, boycotting some of the uh, academic journals and the prices that they force people to the, to to do to to publish. Um, and there's there's other huge publishers as well that uh, uh, one publisher that actually invested in uh, weapons, six hundred million dollars in weapons in, in the past uh, in the past year, and and that was a huge. A uh, huge controversy. Uh, you can look it up. It was in the Guardian, and if uh, if you find it, you get you get bonus points. I'm not going to name bash online. Um, so the, the these issues are also forcing uh, all these organizations to take a, a more um, uh, uh, um, to to think about how they're they're sharing what they're sharing and, and how they're doing business. Um, Guardian, Guardian is, is the, where the article was that uh, that talked about the publisher um, investing into six hundred million dollars into weapons. I'll uh, I'll share it at the end. It'll be the treat. Um, so the 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 visibility that's going on in in the sense of how people are viewing these organizations, and in the same way, the visibility that's going on with teachers and and to what extent um, their their persona outside of class is also becoming uh, important, and and some teachers have been fired for saying things on Facebook. So there's a certain visibility that's coming in, and uh, a transparency with with all these organizations that's changing uh, the industry as well. Collaboration. Um, this was really cool. I went to a conference. Uh, I went to a conference in Paris and uh, Tissot, France, in November. And one of the teachers uh, for for collaboration, he was working with his students. <laughs> Thanks, Aziz. I'm I'm trying to do my best. Um, one uh, one of the things that that he was doing with his students was he was collaborating with them and asking them what they wanted him to do. Uh, in Paris, and then they wrote a lesson up about what they wanted him to do, and he went and did it, and then he reported back. And in the same way that teachers are collaborating with their students with lessons, um, so are publishers with their learners. And I'll I'll show you how we're doing that at EduLong in just a minute. Um, but there's there's a lot more going on in the same sense of uh, how encyclopedias are moving to wikis, and how education is 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 moving more um, into a collaborative and interactive way. Um, and the last thing uh, is the world is flat, which is what Tyson was saying uh, before about having any education anywhere, anytime. Uh, I'm talking to you from a car in the middle of France. We had people from Pakistan, or not Pakistan, but Bangalore, and people from Ukraine and and Canada, and it, it, it's pretty amazing in the way that uh, these connections can be made. Um, you know, when I was teaching in China, I was Skyping back home with people and talking to them. I've uh, been in a classroom uh, in Hungary yesterday. I was talking with the students, with a teacher online. And uh, we have a project now going on with our company. And um, we have a project going on with our company with uh, Phil Wade down in uh, La Réunion, which is really exciting. So. 
I think we're ready to move on to slide 11. So, yes, this is the best example of a flat world that I'm an American talking uh, to a Spanish and international group while on vacation surfing. Um, and then moving on into how Edulong is uh, part of the flat world. These are all of the countries that we have new learners from just in the past five months since we've started our uh, Pay What You Want program. And so I don't know that even half of these countries we had learners and teachers from before. If you see your, your, your flag up there, you can be proud because you're probably one of them or probably someone you know within your PNL might be one of them. Um, so this is something that's really exciting to be connecting with all these learners, uh, not only uh, for us to have feedback from people from all over the world and, and working on what we can develop that would be more interesting for certain learners, but um, it, it, it just, uh, it's a way to, to, with the pay what you want, to open up to everyone at their own level. So I'm going to now start talking a little bit about um, why we've made the decision to move in that direction, and then also uh, start explaining a little bit about some of the um, applications that we have. Um, so real quick, uh, Edge Along, if you, didn't, if you haven't ever seen the background on the uh, company that I'm working for, Edge Along has been around for about 20 years. And the last 10 years, we've been publishing online uh, web applications. So there are many specific applications for grammar, vocabulary, oral comprehension, and then test preparation. And all of the content has been uh, developed by experienced native professors, uh, one or two PhDs that um, are specifically helping us. And the really cool thing that we were talking about before with collaboration is that all of our applications are designed for teachers with students. Um, a lot of, there, there, is, there is a fear, as I'm a teacher too, of being replaced by a computer or an application. And that is not at all the perspective that we have. Um, and so I'll show you how our applications are set up for a certain collaboration between the teachers and the students. So first off, the really interesting thing about Edulong and what they're doing is that uh, we have a pay what you want program for all of our applications. So if you are a teacher and you want to use them for your 10 students, you uh, don't have to pay $100 a month for your 10 students. You don't have to pay um, $1,000 a year. It really is on the benefit of what you can pay uh, or on the basis of what you can pay with a minimum access of a uh, uh, dollar per application per student. And then half of what is paid on top of it uh, is actually going to a charity called Room to Read. Now, if you haven't heard about Room to Read, I'm going to paste something in the comments for you to see. But it's an amazing organization. And then just in the past 10 years since it started, they've built 10,000 libraries all over, mostly in Southeast Asia, but all over the world. and. Um, they loan out uh, 100,000 books every, every week to students all across the world that otherwise probably would not have had access to them. Um, and just in the last year, there were over a million, um, million students, or sorry, a million hours of volunteer that, a uh, million uh, hours volunteered towards their effort from people all over the world, which is really exciting. So, um, here we are, and we are talking about the wonderful Pay What You Want program and the money that is going to uh, Room to Read, too, which is really exciting. Um, before we talk about the specific applications that the students and, uh, and you could use as a teacher, uh, just to, to real quick go over Edulong and all of our applications, um, they can be used on any web browser, um, and it's all in the cloud. So that there's no use, there's no point for them to uh, install anything on their computer. It's it's all accessed through the internet, so it can be used at any time of the day, 24 hours a day, and it's uh, scalable. So what that means is that uh, you can have 10 people on it, you can have a thousand people on it, and even a hundred thousand. The way that the applications have been built, and if you're using a learning management system, um, it is compatible with. Uh, this is the SCORM 1.2 and 2004 
uh, uh, certifications. Uh, the first thing, as uh, Nina has been talking about in the chat box, is English Addicts. And this is one of my favorite uh, applications that we have for the specific reason that it's really focused on international English. All the lessons are based on Voice of America, and um, they're all very recent news, anything that's come out in the past three or four days, and then it comes out as a lesson. Uh, so there are 1,600 lessons now. It's been online, I think, since 2004. Um, and the really cool thing about it <coughs> is uh, that you can actually go and search through all the lessons and hear different accents. And it, it, it's really focusing on 13 different uh, international regions, I think four different native accents, but then a lot of different uh, uh, regional accents as well. So if you have students that are preparing uh, to go live abroad in a certain area or they're specifically dealing with uh, uh, for their professional reasons with a certain population, that could really help too. Um, it's, it's, uh, it has three levels of uh, difficulty. It's for false beginners, so um, B1 to B2, and then C1 and C2 as well. So beginner, intermediate, and uh, difficult, if you will. And then you can see that it has all these different themes. There's an easy way to look at uh, through all of those themes, uh, the search function. It's, it's, it's something that it has a very simple interface, so it's, it's really easy for anyone to be able to use. Um, one, of, uh, one of the teachers that I've been working with recently online, VA is, is almost exclusive for the source, yes. There are a couple lessons that are, um, that are elsewhere. They can be difficult for 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 beginners. Uh, definitely use the the easier lessons for beginners, and they can uh, go through them and, and figure out which lessons are good for them. The the thing we were talking about before with pedagogical approaches, the person that designed this um, designed it as he was doing his PhD, or it was it was part of his PhD work. Um, but there is there's the same pedagogical design to each of the lessons. So each lesson has 10 different activities. Um, and where are we? So each lesson has 10 different activities. There's a before you listen. There's a while you listen. There's an after you listen. There's production-based uh, work on memory, but also listening and writing, um, dictation post-activity, review, glossary. So there's, there's a format to each lesson that is, is really good for really sinking in and solidifying um, whatever lesson they're working on. Um, and then the really nice thing about English Addicts 2 is that it has discussion tasks. So one teacher was talking about, um, I, I put in this, uh, this link before, it was a teacher that was talking about flipping the classroom with uh, English Addicts. I'll put it back in here again. And basically, uh, she was having them doing the online lessons <coughs> and then coming in and discussing them in class. Because with each, uh, with each, uh, with each lesson, there is always a discussion task, uh, discussion and, and uh, uh, speaking tasks. So that could take it easily a uh, half an hour, an hour of time. And I know that uh, Phil Wade, who also wrote on the blog um, as a guest blog at Edulong, if you Google search that, uh, he really loves the discussion tasks and has uh, used them in a lot of classes with or without the online learning also. Um, let me see. I wanted to do upload this. I'm uploading a picture real quick. I'm not so familiar with WizIQ, but I think, do you all see that picture? Nice. So, here is a picture of a Swiss army knife. Now, I'm going to ask a kind of funny question, but it's an interesting question because of the conversation that can follow it. 
How many of you have a Swiss Army knife or a multi-utility knife like that? Some people do. Paco does. I've never seen one. Huh. Confiscated at the airport. Yeah, tough to, tough to get that one through security indeed. So some people haven't seen them. I, I, that's fun. I, I thought that this was going to be a, a thing that most people would recognize. Um, I grew up seeing them uh, around. It was kind of a thing for uh, a dad to have and to, to pull out whenever he needed to do something. Um, but basically, it's a tool for everything. And uh, m the, the joke that I was going to bring up is people that have these, uh, people that have these, uh, you know, how often would you eat breakfast with them? How often would you use them as a spoon? And it's almost never. We don't often use uh, multi, multi, um, multi utility things like this. We almost always use things that are very specific to things that are very specific to what we want to do. So if I move on to the next slide, um, all of Edulong's applications are used to be very specific for the purpose of, of exactly what they want to do. They're not general English. And a good example is Test Simulator, which is the application that prepares students for the TOEIC. Um, and it's available in two modes, practice and test mode. And in practice mode, it helps the student with hints if they need it, and they have immediate feedback on whether their answer was right. Uh, in test mode, it's exactly like taking a TOEIC test. Um, they, uh, they turn the pages themselves. The, uh, they are exactly the same time as the test. And as I'll show on the next uh, page, it's the same type of questions. It's the same format. Um, and then. In this past year, we've, we've uh, and actually in the past month, we have opened up uh, something that is in the same professional TOEIC uh, environment, and is actually certificate. And I'm I'm showing the um, the link here is actually a certificate uh, to test your English and to be certified for it. And it's really interesting because it's um, how we uh, how we make sure that the student is taking the test as they should, is it's a webcam surveyed uh, English certificate. So uh, it, it, it's a way of certifying English uh, purely by taking a test at home, uh, anywhere they want. And we actually, just in the past week, there is a French uh, re recruitment agency that is now using it uh, for all of the people that are they are then uh, recruiting throughout for all of their all their placement opportunities. So we're excited about that. And there's lots of uh, other people that are interested in using this on a wide scale. Um, so that is the recent uh, thing that we've come out with. And so a little bit more about Test Simulator. Uh, yes, Test Simulator is that it has the exact question types and formats as the test. And this is both for the TOEFL and the TOEIC. Um, and it has the same time format. It, it's following it exactly to the T um, how the tests are. So I have a uh, teacher in Italy that just uh, wrote me and talked about how he was using it with his class and how uh, it was actually harder for them than some of the tests actually were that they had taken as official tests. Um, and he said that they took the official test this past weekend, and they were really impressed because they felt they were prepared not only because it was exactly uh, the same format and exactly the same way of uh, taking the test, but also because it was uh, more challenging than the test itself. So um, Test Simulator and English Addicts both have a great collaborative tool to uh, interact with the students and follow and uh, to see how, to track how they are doing on all the lessons, on all the different uh, parts of the tests. Do you license tests from the TOEIC people? Uh, actually, ETS Global, which is uh, ETS uh, who produces the TOEIC and the TOEFL, 
uh, ETS Global in uh, Europe has been using Test Simulator uh, and commercializing it for two years. So um, they obviously approve of the content, which is a big thumbs up for us, and they've been selling it all over Europe for the past two years. Um, lastly, we'll uh, go real quick through this because uh, we've already been on for about an hour. Uh, if you haven't checked out Snap Panda, this is something else that we've done. And uh, I think you'll think it's really cool. Basically, you touch a word that you see through your smartphone, and our application will grab that word. Uh, it'll grab it as a picture. It will use optical character, optical character recognition, which in, uh, by the image, it interprets what the word is. And then it will give you a definition. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out on the website. And uh, if you have Android, you can check it out and download it. And it should be out on iPhone pretty soon. Uh, and then these are two applications that I'm going to be talking about real quickly that will be coming out in the next two weeks. So if you want, you can follow it a little bit more quickly on the blog. On the blog. But again, these are uh, very focused on on one um, on one specific uh, one specific task or one specific area. Uh, just like Test Simulator was, and just like English Addicts is really focused uh, a lot on listening, uh, Gramster and then Vocabster, which you'll see next, are really focused on solidifying those skills. Um, the really nice thing about it, uh, I've been talking about collaboration between student and teacher. Uh, here, there's collaboration between uh, uh, the publisher and the teacher. Uh, all of these, all of these lessons in Gramster and Vocabster are uh, authorable by the teachers, so they can modify or extend the exercises as they need for their classroom. Um, I'm going to move on and just show you the next slide. So this is kind of the same uh, approach as, as um, Gramster. They're exercises that are using a modern communicative approach. And specifically, Vocabster introduces about 4,000 uh, words. Uh, so there's beginner, intermediate, and advanced that they can work through. Um, each, each lesson has hints and feedback, and they're kind of cool little people that, uh, like a little midget that says, yes, great. <laughs> and, or, or they say, no, you got the answer wrong. So that's kind of fun. Um, and they'll give you hints if, if, if you're having problems with them. Uh, so these, these two applications will be coming out in about two weeks. And they will also be pay what you want, um, which is really cool. I see Mira has a question. So you create and validate your own test items in the simulator. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by create. Uh, we, we've, we've produced, we've, we've written all the content ourselves, yes. Um, and the, um, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure that I understood the question. So we are coming towards the end. I would like to give you all a big grand merci. Very thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and, and uh, listening and participating. And if you have any questions about anything that I presented, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, uh, uh, there's also my email below if you'd like to uh, email me about anything that I've talked about or any questions you might have. Um, there's also my Twitter handle. I do a lot on Twitter. Love it. Thank you, Paco and Maria and Tyson. Um, available for any questions. Hey, Alexander, thanks. I hope I was comprehensible. My mind is, is, not, in, is not in work mode. My mind is in vacation mode. So if I missed you guys every now and again on, on some points, I, I, I hope you don't mind too much. Um, uh, thank you very much, Brad. I'm, I'm coming back uh, to the mic now just to say thank you uh, for coming. And uh, that was just awesome. Um, I, I really loved it. Uh, thanks ever so much. My pleasure. It's fun uh, to connect with folks from all over the world. And thank you so much for, for coming. I really do appreciate it. I'm looking at your question, Nora.
Sounds good. Sounds good. Or feel free to, to shoot me an email. I'm super open and enjoy talking about all this stuff. Um, okay, right. So um, if there are no more questions, um, whenever you say, uh, well, we can close the webinar today. And enjoy, uh, enjoy your surfing, and and um, and thank you for interrupting your vacation uh, to be this um, time uh, with us. The world is flat. Thank Carl you. And I, uh, yeah, I know. Thanks. It, thank you so much for inviting that's cool. me, and uh, it, it's great to uh, just exchange with everyone. So, gracias.